Welcome back to The Division 2. In this video we are going through my survivability build and the only reason we are doing this is because I've had several people ask me on stream. It's not the greatest, you can get better than this, but this build is more than capable of doing legendary. It's suitable for solo or co-op play, like group play. And what we're going to do is we are going to jump into the build. After that I will show you a flaw on legendary to kind of give you some gameplay tips on how to use the build efficiently. So jumping into it, I'm running the classic M1A, and if we have a look at that, the crit damage could be a lot higher. But I do run the boomerang talent on there because crits have a 50% chance to return the bullet to the magazine. This is an M1A that I use on my DPS build. So as long as you have a gun that's going to deal a decent amount of damage, that is fine. I have the Harmony there just because it's a second weapon, and I run the Liberty because I use the shield on this build. And if you have a look at the talent, Liberty or Death, hits grant 2% weapon damage and it stacks up to 30 times. Then if you get a headshot, it consumes all the stacks, repairing your shield for 3% per stack. So if you are stacking up to 30 times, then you're going to get 90% of your shield health back. Then if we jump into the Mask, it is a Bellstone Armory, one of two pieces. Every single thing on this build is specced around armor, hazard protection, and armor regen where possible. Although, if there isn't any hazard protection, it will be health. You can go for health, but I'd much rather take hazard protection because, especially if you're playing legendary, if you've got the special ammo directive on, or if there's the chunguses that come out with their bleed hives, the hazard protection is going to help you resist it a little bit more. So there's the first of two Bellstone armory pieces. So the backpack is one of three Gila Guard pieces on the build. Total armor, health, and armor regen. Armor, armor regen, health, and armor on kill. I'd like to get a new backpack, but I've not been farming for survivability stuff for a little while. The talent, I always go with adrenaline rush. Whenever you are within 10 meters of an enemy, gain 20% bonus armor for 5 seconds, and it stacks up to 3 times with a 5 second cooldown. So if you can be close enough to three enemies, you'll get 60% bonus armor, and it's incredibly helpful. Then taking a look at the second Bellstone Armory piece, we get armor regen and armor on kill from the brand set. Then you can see they are maxed out, armor, armor regen, hazard protection. Down to the knee pads, the second of three Gila Guard pieces, armor, health, armor regen. Then over to the holster, armor, armor regen, and hazard protection. Then this is possibly the most important piece, the reason I run the Tardigrade, not because of the triple god roll or anything like that, not because of the explosive resistance, because of the talent, ablative nano plating. Whenever yours or your allies armor breaks, they gain 80% of your armor as bonus armor for 10 seconds. So because my armor is 1.9 million, they're getting 80% of it. So whenever someone in the group when their armor breaks, you get 1.5 million back because it's 80% of my total armor. And it lasts for 10 seconds. So it's like a second chance sort of thing. It's got a 45 second cooldown per ally. But then if you kill an enemy with your specialization, it removes the cooldown for all allies. If you are solo, you can still run this. It's going to be helpful. Or you can just run the zero Fs for perfect unbreakable. Or you can just run any chest and you can put the unbreakable talent on it. It's going to do exactly the same thing. You'll actually get quite a bit more armor back if you're solo and you're running unbreakable. I always run the revive hive. I've only got one charge with it because there's no skill tier or anything like that. But then the most important part of the build is the shield. And I either run the bulwark if I'm in a group. Then that way I can have the liberty out and I can get body shots and then land a headshot and get that shield health back. 13.2 million health on the shield. Or what I'm going to do because I'm running solo is I'm going to switch that up for the Crusader shield so that I can use a primary weapon. It's only got 4.6 million health, but that way I can deal more damage. And so I've still got protection from the shield and I can deal a little bit more damage for solo play. So quickly jumping into the stats, I've got 287.2k weapon damage, not a lot of crit chance or anything like that. So Boomerang is possibly not a great talent to run on the weapon. And then if we go down, you can see we don't have a lot of weapon damage bonuses. And then down to here, we've got 1,920k armor pretty much. We get 245,000 of it back on kill. We have 67.3k armor regen, which is plenty. You don't need to go over the top with it and have like 100k plus or anything like that. Max health is 401,000. Pulse resistance is 50%. Explosive resistance is 16.8. And then the hazard protection is 40%. My watch is maxed out for hazard protection as well, 
But then if you look at the, every single resistance is 40% and then burn is 60. So what we're going to do is jump in. I've set up the elevator to go straight to 91. So it's legendary with three directives. Okay, so floor 91, we've got ammo hoarders. So I'm going to use the bulwark shield. And uh, there's a hostage, which is never good. What you need to do is try and stay front on with the enemies. It's annoying because they're aggressive. They always try running past you. You can see my stacks building up. So I'm on 26 right now. 27, 28, 29, 30. And what I'm going to do is let them shoot my shield up a little bit. Or just use your special ammo and disrupt me completely. I've just consumed all the stacks as well. I need to stop this dog. Why is there a rush around here? These enemies literally do what they want. See, that's why it's nice to run the Crusader shield, because you get more damage from an M1A than you do the Liberty. But the Liberty helps you with getting your shield health back up. And you can see there, I went from just over half to like full shield health because I popped that headshot with stacks. As long as you stay face on with the enemies, or try your best to, they don't really do a lot of damage unless they disrupt you like that. My tardigrade needs to kick in. Okay, I don't even need it to. I almost needed it to because of the special ammo. See, when 11.1 comes out, we can choose our own directives. So you guys playing Legendary on the Summit from then onwards, you might not ever really need to worry about the Tardigrade if you can keep your shield up because you can play without special ammo. At the moment, it's just random directives. Nice. Floor done. A little bit of loot back here. Not worth my time. Okay, what I'm going to do is... Don't change the build. I'm going to switch up to the Crusader. I'm going to try outputting a little bit more damage. This is more risky. Just because... You've only got 4. Point, oh, I've only got 4.6 mil health with this shield. But I can deal that little bit more damage. You can see my shield's already almost gone. See, I'd say it's always best when you're playing Legendary in the Summit. Back out of the room and use this like corridor area to your advantage. Because they will eventually start pushing. Like, I've got my shield back now. My armor started regenerating. Oh, no, not the mini tanks. No, they are the worst enemies in this game right now. I don't think we have too many enemies left at all. What I'm going to do, because I've got 13 rounds, is I'm going to... Switch over to the bulwark again. And that way I can just use the Liberty unlimited ammo. So ammo hoarders doesn't really matter. Okay, so now all the enemies are dead. All i got to do is wait for that. One more. Boom. So that's a floor cleared on Legendary. It can take a little while. Switch between the shields. Obviously, it depends whether you're solo or group playing. When I'm in a group, because there's other DPS players, I always run the bulwark. 
But when I'm solo, I switch between the both so that I can use my primary weapon as well. Now, I would have carried on using the Crusader and just backed out of the room a little bit more if I didn't have Ammo Hoarders. Ammo Hoarders is a little bit annoying. But obviously, when Title Update 11.1 drops, we will have the option to choose which directives we want. So you, you never have to play with it if you don't want to. But Legendary... I, w I wouldn't necessarily say it's tough in the summit. Like, it, it can be tough, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's easy. But all you've got to do is be patient. You've got to be situational. You've got to know when to back out of the room. Don't be too aggressive. Don't push too much and stuff. Just if you play smart, then you will be able to get it done. I would strongly recommend running a survivability build if you're solo. I've tried DPS and it's not the greatest because it's legendary difficulty. They're the hardest form of enemies. They hit like trucks. And then mini tanks, they definitely need to tune in because they are so strong. I would say right now the mini tanks are stronger than the heavies. But that's going to do it for this video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.